Blog Talk Radio. Hello out there, everybody. It is Monday, April 2nd, 2012. I am David Demzowski, founder of The Financial Bin and host of Financial Bin Radio. This is our first installment of Business in Baseball Week. We're celebrating Major League Baseball's opening week here, and we're having some special guests this week and kind of tying it in with, with uh, baseball, and I, hope, I really hope you guys enjoy it. Now, before we get started, please let me share some quick notes with you. First off, don't forget to pick up your copy of Entrepreneur Intervention, Triumphs and Failures of Entrepreneurs. You can do so for just 99 cents on Apple's iBookstore, Kindle, Nook, and Sony Reader. And you can also get a paperback copy for just under $10 at Amazon and CreateSpace. All you got to do, go to FinancialBin.com, click on the book, book section at the very top next to the login button for more information. Secondly, we're in the planning and editing stages and the formatting process for Landlord Intervention. This is a book by a gentleman who has been in the real estate bit, rental business for over 20 years. He gives you a fantastic step-by-step how-to guide for you to begin your own career as a landlord, and we plan to release this book in May 2012. Finally, we're also still collecting submissions for Wealth Intervention. We plan to release this book later this year, and that will be the third installment of the Intervention series. Now, tonight's guest, his name is Todd Stottlemyre. Todd, as as I'm sure you guys all know, he is a former Major League pitcher turned entrepreneur, and he's going to give us an account of how what he's been up to since he's since he traded in his baseball cleats for business shoes. Todd, welcome to Financial Bin Radio. David, how are you today, my man? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing great out in sunny Arizona, 75 degrees. I can't complain. <laughs> well, it's actually sunny here in Newtown, Pennsylvania, too, but it's not quite as warm, but uh, still enjoying the weather. <laughs> All right, Todd, let's just jump right into into it here. The first question I have for you is, can you take us through what you've been doing since you left baseball? Yeah, very good. You know, I retired in '02, so it's hard to believe it's been a decade. But, wow. But uh, time does fly, yeah. You know, when I retired from baseball, I, you know, oddly enough, I was going to try to take a year off. And my goal was to take a year off away from baseball, kind of gather my thoughts. I had uh, the entrepreneur spirit burning inside of me. I wanted to build something. I wanted to develop something. I wanted to build a team. I wasn't quite sure where that was going to take me, but I can tell you, I lasted about six months because uh, after six months, at the age of 37, I was like, man, i got to do something. i got to do it fast because I felt like I just lost the purpose in my life. And I actually went to work at Merrill Lynch, and it was a great experience. I was there about four and a half years. I built an asset management team. and and But after four and a half years, it was nothing more than a Band-Aid because, you know, it really wasn't driving that purpose. Uh, launched a hedge fund, uh, built a number of different companies. We were, I was involved in the in the golf course business, uh, for better or for worse. Uh, <laughs> I was involved in some technology startup companies, uh, some better, some worse. Uh, was just kind of digging my way through. And and I got to tell you, you know, when 2008 came, and this recession and that globe delevered, I got to tell you, a lot of our assets were turned upside down, and and. Uh, and, you know, after going through that experience, uh, I actually found myself in the office of a very wealthy gentleman uh, showing me a company in network marketing, and I actually fell in love. Number one, network marketing has is, is been a blast for me. I've been building hard over the last two years, growing, literally growing teams around the globe, uh, teaching people how to make money on bills they're going to pay for for the rest of their life. Uh, it's given me a great purpose in my life to help people out with their financial dreams. So I've been having a blast. I've been staying busy, and and uh, and i got to tell you, it's been a great run. Well, you know, that's actually a great transition to my next question for you here. And, you know, entrepreneurship and baseball, I, I feel, and sports in general, are just really closely related because of the, the mentality you have to have. So, you know, Todd, what are some traits or lessons that you developed as a player that you kind of carried through uh, into your post-baseball career and, and into what, what you're working on now? Well, I think the biggest thing is you have to learn to deal and cope with failure. You know, let's take New York Yankee shortstop Derek Deer. You know, it's hard to imagine that today he's the only Yankee that has collected 3,000 hits in an historical franchise. Right. But to right. collect those 3,000 hits, he's failed almost 7,000 times. So think they don't about tell it. you that. Deal with failure 7,000 times to become the all-time hits leader for a story franchise. So my opinion, I think one of the biggest things is, is you know, you truly got to fail your way to the top. 
you got to, you know, every failure is an experience, every experience you can learn from, and uh, you just have to be able to cope with it. You have to be able to keep your head down, take it one step at a time, and, and have a belief in your vision. And whatever that vision is, you just have to have a belief that there's an end in sight and then goals to achieve those steps to find that end. Well, you know, it's funny you, you bring up Jeter and that he failed 7,000 times. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is, uh, I think it was from Thomas Edison, he said that, you know, I didn't fail 10,000 times. This is when he was uh, trying to design the light bulb. I just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So he only, yeah, had, to, he right. only had to succeed once. <laughs> that's right. That's exactly right. Right, right. So, so Todd, can, can you touch on maybe some of the companies you're involved with? I'm, I'm not sure if you have some kind of clause where you can't, but if you could touch on some of the companies you're involved with and maybe some that you're invested in and, and maybe why you picked those companies. Um, you know, I'm involved in a digital media company that, that uh, in my opinion, is really, really exciting. Uh, you know, I really believe that we've created the dashboard for digital media, much like Bloomberg did for the financial markets. And, and sure. I think that you're going to hear and see a lot from that company over the next couple of years. They're working on some significant projects. Uh, you know, funny how I ended up in that deal was basically through a relationship uh, with one of my former owners of a Major League Baseball team and, and really oh, hit wow. it off with the CEO and and we developed a new company, and I say we. Uh, look, I'm not the brains behind the organization, but <laughs> it made sense to me. Uh, um, he's, a, he's a brilliant CEO, and it, it truly is an engineering firm. And, uh, you know, I, I think that what they've created is going to be second to none in the marketplace. And, and uh, so I'm excited about the digital media company. Uh, once again, you know, the network marketing company I'm involved with and, and in fairness, it's, it, it is probably not ethical for me to name that company, but i got to tell you, I, I believe it might be the it, – it's truly the major leagues of business. In my opinion, it's one of the best and biggest opportunities that there is out there. Uh, when you start thinking about your cost of business ownership and then the ability to broker bills people are going to pay for for the rest of your life, makes the greatest financial uh, sense to me. And to be able to teach and have the purpose to help other people create their financial fortunes has been a blessing in my life. Todd, what's been the, the toughest part of the transition from, you know, you're, you're, you're a Major League Baseball player, you're, you're, you're Todd MLB pitcher, and then you become Todd entrepreneur and businessman. What, what's been the toughest part of that transition? Oh, you know, I, I got to tell you, you know, when I look back on my playing days, I'll never forget my mom asked me a question towards the end of my career. She says, you know, what are you going to miss the most? And I said, one hour before game time. You know, that one hour before game time when, you're, when your nerves are kind of at the peak and you're going through and, and you're, you know, simulating your game plan on how you're going to approach that game and all of the anxiety and the responsibility you have as a starting pitcher – uh, you know, it's kind of, in my opinion, it's been irreplaceable. Now, but I'm a competitive person by nature, so I think that, you know, competing in the marketplace and, and attempting to build companies and, and trying to sail my way to the top in, in a different industry ha has been a challenge. Uh, not quite like that hour before game time, but it certainly has replaced a lot of that competitive spirit that I have for building companies, you know. And, you, you know, you mentioned companies, and, and, and I don't really call it a company. It's, it's more of a hobby. I'm having fun with it. The fantasy game I put together was was nothing more than a thought when I was on an airplane is, you know, fantasy baseball and the length of the season and to try to uh, for a consumer to manage that, that game uh, over 162 games. And I came up with a game of the week and, and, and kind of thought, you know, how about if every Saturday we just picked winners and, and I'm in there competing against people and I'm having fun with it and, you know, and it's free for people. And it's just an outlet on Saturdays to follow teams and to follow the sport and to be engaged. And, and I'm having a, like I said, I'm having a blast with it. Uh, there's no revenue model attached to it. Uh, last year was the launch of the game and, and the winner of the game, the grand prize was we're giving all-star game tickets away. Uh, to the winner of that game last year. We're going to do it again this year. It's really just for fun and the love of the game. Todd, how, how can uh, listeners get involved with that, with, with the yeah, Game you, of the Week? Yep, you can go to Stottlemyre Game of the Week. Uh, the spelling of that, 
Kind of tricky. <laughs> so S T O T T L E M Y R E game of the week, and uh, you can go and register, and then uh, hey, let's have some fun with it. Uh, let's play pick the Saturday winners, and I'm gonna be in there competing against you. I'm gonna see if I I can fare as well as the fans today. Well, I'll make sure to put that up on the website too, with with all the proper spelling attached to it. Um, I yeah, not that. Tom, I, <laughs> no problem, uh, Todd. So you know you're a former athlete that that didn't just hang up everything when you retired from the game you played. You know there are many there are stories of many former athletes out there who make their millions over their career, and then we kind of find out a few years later that they blew it all. Maybe you know on, on cars, on homes, or whatever. So when did you decide to take that different path, and and what did you learn from all those other players who lost it all? Well, you know, I don't, I don't. Number one, I don't think you ever stop learning, and and you know we were great savers through the game by nature. You know, I, I got a, you know, I, first of all, I got great parents, and and so I had an unbelievable upbringing, and and you know, there's so much wisdom in parents today that, you know, I think the kids sometimes grow up thinking that they have all the answers, and you know, I just felt like you know my mentor, my idol was my father. Uh, he was definitely that. Uh, he's old-fashioned by nature. Uh, we were great savers. Uh, you know, I got to tell you, when I retired from the game in '02, you know, one of the things that I had was time and money, and time and money, having it together, in my opinion, is a great quality of life. Now, uh, but let's make no bones about it. You know, I was involved in a lot of businesses. I faced a recession just like everyone else out there, and we were too affected by that recession. Uh, you know, we had companies that were we're under stress and this and that. Uh, it's 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 part of being in business. So, uh, but you know, and I'm thankful that I didn't leave the game. And when I left the game, I left everything behind me. Yeah, I left all my playing days behind me, but was severely overpaid, uh, humbled and grateful for all the experiences and teammates and world championships that I had. And like I said, was severely overpaid and and. Uh, you know, I had a very diversified model in markets and real estate and companies. And, and, you know, I tell people and teach people today, I say, you know, the thing that we went through in 08, 09, I believe that we're still in the middle of that, although I think this is the greatest time for opportunities, and that's because the country is in a difficult time and a period of time, and I believe that that creates a landscape of opportunities out there. But, you know, so many people have had so much of a shock based on what's happened. And, you know, we're no different. We lost companies. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of our portfolios were turned upside down, just like everybody else in the country. Uh, but the way that I look at that is that's, that's the time. That's the time that, that you dig in. That's the time that you fight for what you believe in. And, and, you know, I've had a blast continuing to reinvent myself as a person, as an entrepreneur, as a business person. And, uh you know, history will take care of itself. Ty, do you, do you see yourself maybe, uh, you know, getting in with an ownership group and getting in to maybe buy a major league team or having a stake in maybe a, a minor league franchise? Man, that would be fun. i got to tell you, you know, uh, a lot of people ask me about the game, and they say, well, you know, uh, I jokingly said maybe it's time for a comeback the other day. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, I saw uh, that. <laughs> yeah, and I say jokingly. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I think it would be a lot of fun. I think that uh, – you know, I mean, whether it's a minor league team, a major league team, hey, look, I love the game. I love the sport. I love what it stands for. I love the purity of the game. I love the smell of the grass, uh, uh, the roar of the crowd, uh, the game within the game. I mean, it's just so much fun. And I think that, you know, being the architect of a team someday, that might be an avenue that uh, or might be a road that, uh, you know, I may travel. Well, let, let's continue with baseball here a little bit. Uh you know, as I've told you before, I'm a diehard Phillies fan. So, you know, when when your Blue Jays beat my Phillies back in '93, yeah, it really caught me. To hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I mean, you know, it's a new year, and you know, the, the Phillies are uh, have that, and you know, they have some issues with Utley and, and Howard, but they still have that mm-hmm. strong uh, starting staff. So, I guess in general, who, who do you like this year? Well, you know, here's the neat thing for me is, you know, everybody goes to spring training, and uh, everybody's at the same spot, right? And right. you get into opening day, and on opening day before that first pitch is thrown, everybody's in first place, and and then half the teams are in first place after day one, and every, the other half are in last place. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's like 
you know, we can sit near me and you, and you know, you're going to pick the Phillies. Of course, you're a fan favorite of the Phillies. I don't blame you. They got a they got an awesome rotation. Uh, they're a very competitive ball club. They got some great athletes on that team. I got to tell you, without if not just naming that team per se that I'm picking, I would I got to tell you, I would love to see Nolan Ryan win. And the last two years, and especially last year. Uh, although I played for both clubs, the Rangers and the Cardinals, mm-hmm. and Tony La Russa and Dave Duncan being in that in that uh, in that dugout, you know, uh, sure. half of my heart was, uh, or three quarters of it might have been in that St. Louis dugout. But there was also a big part of my heart that was with the Texas Rangers and sure. and watching Nolan in that eighth and ninth inning and and uh, watching him go through that from the stand. I got to tell you, I'm a Nolan Ryan fan. I think he, you know, he's one of the all-time greats. I think he's one of the amazing competitor. And part of me would like to see Nolan Ryan as an owner win a world championship. Well, okay. Well, I, I, just being, being an objective <laughs> you observer like here, I'll answer, say that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of caught me off guard. I thought you were going to go Phillies. You know, little little payback here. <laughs> well, well, okay. Well, well, Todd. Now. Now, how is baseball like entrepreneurship? You know, for me, I, I've kind of always likened the two to a kind of a test of wills and perseverance almost. And I, I always believe that, you know, similar to a baseball season, you know, being an entrepreneur is more of a marathon than a sprint. Yeah, what, what is your take on that? Yeah, you know, I, absolutely. And I, I just believe so much of it, too, is, you know, is preparation, uh, you know, is believing that you can do it, uh, having a set of goals, and I think that with the sport or with business, you know, Michael Milken one time told me, you know, is plan your work and then work your plan. I believe that it has a lot to do with a starting pitcher where you got to really plan your game plan and then uh, and then go execute and go work that plan. So, uh, you know, they're in my opinion, they're they're truly very similar. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know. I, I remember coming up, and I remember, you know, so many people telling me that, you know, I wasn't going to make it. I, I wasn't like my dad. I, well, I couldn't pitch like him, and I was never going to have that type of career. And, you know, but in my mind, I never doubted myself for one second that I wouldn't pitch in the big leagues. And I think you got to truly sell out to your belief. And I think you got to do that in business. I think you got to do that in sports. So I see a lot of similarities in that fashion. Well, building off of that, one of my last questions for you here is, if you could give the members of Generation Y one tip, what, it, what would it be? Um, you know, financial, Ben, we, we focus on personal finance and entrepreneurship for Gen Y. So so what, what's your one tip? What's Todd Steinemeyer's one tip? Never quit. You know, I think it's simple. Uh, you know, quitters never win, winners never quit. I'm not sure which one of the great minds of our time came up with that quote, but I think that you know, it's what I it's what I believe in. It's what I stand for. And and uh, you know, if I had to say one thing to whether it was somebody in business or sports, and and that is is you know, work hard every day and and just never quit. Well, Todd, how can listeners get in contact with you and learn more about what you're working on? Yeah, so I have a website, Todd Uh I appreciate you you know allowing me to come on and speak today and and talk no with you. I've been a big fan of of what you're doing. I know you've been extremely busy. Um, I've been following your prior progress with Financial Ben. So, um, you know, I'm involved with a number of companies, uh, and, you know, the fantasy game and that sort of thing. But uh, I'll try to keep you updated, uh, you know, on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Facebook, and or you can go to my website, com. Todd, it's been a real pleasure. Uh, hopefully at the end of the year, we um, the, the end of the year is a little bit different than Nolan Ryan winning, but <laughs> I'll let that one slide on you. It's really been well, a pleasure we'll having you on. We'll come back and uh, maybe we'll circle back around playoff time and we can make some different predictions and have some fun. That sounds, that sounds like a plan. I would really enjoy that. Awesome, David. You have a great day. All right, go, go enjoy the Arizona weather. All right, everybody, that was Todd Stottlemyre, former Major League pitcher turned entrepreneur. And remember, you can check him out at toddstottlemyre.com. I really want to thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you, you got as much out of that as I got out of it. Uh, it was really interesting kind of seeing a different perspective and, and somebody that started out um, in, in a very unique position in life and is now really taken to it in the, in the entrepreneurship and business game. You know, Make sure to check out financialbed.com for the latest on personal finance and entrepreneurial advice for Generation Y, make sure to pick up your copy of Entrepreneur Intervention. 
Now, I want to let, I want to let you know that we're for our second installment of Business and Baseball Week, as, as we're celebrating here uh, Major League Baseball's opening week, we're going to be having Chris Kempel, who is the general manager of the Wilmington Blue Rocks. I've had the pleasure of speaking with him on a, on a couple of occasions. Chris is a great guy. He's going to kind of take you through um, the marketing aspect in, in, in marketing a minor league franchise and how that can relate to, to you out there, everyone out there starting a business. So, again, I want to thank you for your time. Remember, Todd's.Amara.com, financialbin.com. Until next time, I am David Domzowski, and thank you so much for listening.